Keon Henderson ain't gonna stop scamming y'all. In four months, I'm gonna show you why you had to go through it. In four months, everybody that's in front of you gonna be. Matter of fact, can you do this by faith? Touch yourself and say, in four months, I'll be debt free. In four months. In four, in four months. In four months, God's gonna give me a strategy in four months. But let's talk about it here on All Things Theology. Cue my theme music. All Things Theology. All Things Theology. We chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta give that theology to God. Hollow because this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Yo, grace and peace, and welcome back to an episode of All Things Theology. Well, this is your host, K-Dub, and today we're going to be talking about good old Keon Henderson. Man, he's still, he's still out here begging, begging for money, doing everything he can to scrape every penny he got. What's very interesting, oh, by the way, this is not this Sunday's uh, sermon. This was actually the Sunday before sermon, so just for context, so about a week and a half ago at this point. Uh, what's very interesting is, he, I mean, he keeps begging. I mean, he's making all the R&B singers jealous. Let's, let's actually get right into it. You know how we do it here. Let's talk about it. Anticipating hurt. That isn't even coming. Paul is on his fourth shipwreck. And if I had to end the sermon, I could end it right here and say, four times the ships didn't make it, and four times he did. I want you to listen to this. I'm going to play this all the way through for his example. And I just want you to answer the question, is this parallel to what he's going through? Watch this. Y'all missed everything I just said. Only you got it. I'm going to talk right to you, young lady. Four times the thing he trusted broke. And four times he made it out alive, which means that you, look at me, young lady, you don't even need what you're crying about. Here's the word of the Lord. Let it go ahead and break and let it break apart. Your struggle is you keep trying to keep it together. Some stuff you need to go ahead and let break. Matter of fact, I need about 50 people to just break the alabaster box in here today. Slap somebody and say, just let it break. Let it burn. What in the Usher Raymond is going on? Again, you're going to see how this actually develops into something a lot more bizarre. This is actually in the bad, bizarre part. Yeah, let's keep going. You around here trying to hold it together and sometimes you just got to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Any, does anybody really trust him? No, I, I said, I didn't say anybody wants, I said, does anybody in here trust him? God, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know how the church is going to get rebuilt. I don't know where we're going next, but I know that when they find out what you did, if it had not been for the Lord, who was on my side, Give yourself a high five and say, I'm about to have a testimony in a minute. Matter of fact, I feel like preaching. Just tell somebody I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I need all. What in the destiny's child is happening? Uh, but, but again, he's building up to this point. So let me let, let me let him cook. For the survivors to identify yourself in this place today. You've been through so much that if you had to write it all, it would take the rest of the year. Look at somebody, don't sing it, tell them I've been through too much not to worship him. Not everything that has breath. I've been through four shipwrecks, four near death experiences. For if it had not been for the Lord on my side testimonies. Then I started to think. Four. So I want you to listen. He's he's got this number four. So now he's about to try to make some parallel. So he says he's been through four shipwrecks, which now he's spiritualizing shipwrecks. He's he's been through four near death experiences, which that's even being spiritualized. And four, it had it not been for the Lord. Right? But watch where he takes this or is a very powerful number 
North, South, East, West. Summer, Fall, Winter, Spring. Four. Four is a powerful number. The NCAA has the final four. If I hit a home run, it don't count unless I cross all four bases. If I play golf and I hit the ball that's about to hit you, I got to yell. Four is a very, very. That last one is a huge stretch because they're just saying four. It's F-O-R-E. But why didn't he choose baseball? Like the innings. There's nine innings, right? Uh, or, you know, hockey, there's three periods. He's, all he's doing is picking the number four and finding four that matches it. You know, we got to say this. Um, how dare you? No, 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 no. Sir, that, that doesn't mean you can make some kind of parallel because you can see four in your life and you're like, hey, wait. Hey. Sir, make it make sense. That's all we got to ask. We got to say. Powerful. Very powerful number four. He's been through four shipwrecks, four shipwrecks. The cello, the ukulele, the double bass, the violin, they all have four strings. Four is a, a very, very powerful number. If you know music, comment. But drums only have two sticks. What's your point? <laughs> We're going to see his point. It's a dumb point because, again, this is what you call confirmation bias. You're starting with a presupposition that something in your life is biblically happening and, and god is with you because four and then all you do is find numbers of four out in the world into society i mean you you literally set the stage for your own point you know what i mean and has four beats four is a very 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 powerful number and when i saw that he had been through four shipwrecks it's the reason i picked the message because i almost lost my mind but notice why he picked the message of paul being shipwrecked it's because he saw himself in the text. <laughs> he, I mean, he literally just told on himself. I mean, did y'all hear that? He literally just told on himself, but we're not done. But wait, there's more. Because I wasn't smart enough to know what God was doing. Somebody say rhema word. See, every once in a while, God will drop something in your spirit that your intelligence can't pick up. Four is a very powerful number. Now, I got proof you can go back and run the tape. I stood right here last Sunday with no evidence a rhema word came out of my mouth, didn't plan it. God said, tell the people that by Thanksgiving, we'll have everything we need. Raise your hand if you heard me say that last week. <laughs> then I got to thinking, August. <laughs> September. I, I, I'm not that smart, but I think the next one is October. And then there's one more. And what month is Thanksgiving in? Touch your neighbor and tell him in the next four months, God is about to fix everything that's been broken. No, 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 no. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, Now we boy. can still see the real reason why he picked the message. Say, is that all? Is that all? We can see the real reason why he picked the message because he, he's trying to find this parallel in his life with the number four. And so he says, by Thanksgiving, everything's going to be all right. Oh, that's four months away. So let me find something in the scripture. And then in the in the life of just regular life, what has four in it? And that's literally his message throughout this whole sermon. I'm, I'm not kidding you. It's it's that bad. But again, so he says in four months, they're going to have everything they need. I thought it was 21 days. So is it 21 days or is it four months? Remember, he did that whole 21 days, you know, uh, again. OK, hey, look, he says it's four months. OK, let's 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 hear him out. I ain't about to yell. you going to do the yelling this time. In four months, God's about to erase the hurt. In four months, God's about to turn it all around. High five four people and tell them four months. Four months, four months away from your money doubling, four months away from your money doubling. So they're four months away. So, hey, God's going to rebuild the church of Lighthouse Church. <laughs> Speaking of a, a, a shipwreck, right? Uh, in four months, God's going to rebuild their church. But don't worry. Don't worry. He's also going to also going to double that money. You know, y'all know what time it is. I got bread in my He's going to double 
that bread in your pocket for your trouble. Oh yeah, sir. No way. I'm tired of the church. Again, this is what you call eisegesis. The pass the passage and he was talking about an axe about possible has nothing to do with what this man was talking about the whole sermon. Nothing. <laughs> Cause guess what? Paul didn't get that shit back. So <laughs> What is he talking about? Right. And, and it wasn't four months later. He's just adding in the fillers. And, you know, he's calling it rhema word. Whenever someone wants to add nonsense, they call, oh, this is a rhema word. That's them admitting it's not in the Bible. They're just making it up. Four months away from your body being healed. Four months away from your marriage being healed. Four months away from your child. I can't get nobody in here today. Listen, everybody who's sleeping, go to sleep. The rest of us gonna have church. I need you to look at all the people who look like they're alive and tell them four months, four months, four months, four months, four months. I need you to reach over people four months, four months, four months. Four months and the debt will be canceled. Four months and the dream is gonna make sense. Four months. You know how you're gonna get that more money though, right? Let me show you how. Oh yeah, more members, more money, more money, more members. You see that 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 all things theology proverb right there. <laughs> but he's gonna go on more with four. You know, uh, let's keep hearing this. In four months, I'm going to show you why you had to go through it. In four months, everybody that's in front of you going to be. Matter of fact, can you do this by faith? Touch yourself and say, in four months, I'll be debt free. In four months. In four, in four months. In four months, God's going to. Uh, Biden must be about to do that, uh, that debt cancellation plan real quick. But but again, he's just promising them all the things they want. You know, just to be serious right quick. He's just promising everything they want. More money, no debt. I mean, who's going to say no to that, right? Of course, of course we want that. But he has no justification for promising that, right? And, and, and again, I want you to remind yourself. Can we talk for a minute? The Bible says. He's supposed to be preaching about Paul's shipwreck. But notice what the sermon's all about. This is classic Keon Henderson sermon. Twisting text, and then next thing you know, he's preaching about himself. Every sermon I've listened to has d followed that paradigm. Give me a strategy in four months. In four months, God's going to do something with this depression. In four months. So, so you can laugh at me now. You can laugh at me now. Go ahead. Go ahead and get it out. Ha, 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 ha. Go ahead and laugh. I actually think he's going to get the money. You know why? Because there's plenty of fools that are willing to give to him. So a lot of people are like, oh, he's not going to get that. Money. He probably will. Because there's a lot of false converts who, who I mean, the reason why they're giving is because they want to receive this blessing. So unfortunately, he probably will get it because you know what they want. Money coming to me now. Money coming to me now. Yeah, they want the money themselves, right? We're broken. We're behind. The doors are closed. That's fine. But in four months, holler at your boy. In four months, let me show you what God will do. In four So is he saying, and I'm asking you guys, what do you think? Is he saying in four months they'll just have the money? Or in four months the whole church will be built and they will be open? You know, because if the church is as badly destroyed as he say, it may take a little longer than four months. I, I mean, unless he got these people working overtime like, the, you know, they had the boys up in Egypt. Uh, but what do y'all think? I'm going to be crying for a little while. He gonna cry in his but heart. in four. James a second. It, it only lasts a little while. In four months. Some of y'all gonna walk in your job in four months. And they're gonna be like, come into the office. Don't be nervous. This is a promotion, not a demotion. Just just walk in there and be like, I'm sorry. I don't know why it took y'all so long. I've been waiting on this for a long time. Yes, I will accept. <laughs> Somebody shout four months. 
I see new cars in four months. I see new houses in four months. I see houses you didn't build. I see vineyards you did not plant. Four. Four months. Four months. Four months. Oh, by the way, if you play basketball, four is the number for the power forward. <laughs> see, see you, what, 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 what God's about to do in four months is give you power. No, 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 no. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Yeah, but how y'all preaching y'all number five because y'all always think y'all the sinner. Y'all the center of the attention, the center of the sermon, every sermon. What does that have to do with anything that the, the position of the power forward is the four? <laughs> OK, this man actually think he's giving some kind of revelatory uh, from God sermon. This is this is just pure nonsense. This is pure nonsense. But they're up there yelling. Yes, Randy Watson. <laughs> that boy is good. Power. You, you're going to have to handle this. You're going to have to handle this well. You, that's, you're going to have to do some of that attitude. You're going to have to do some of that arrogance. You're going you're to have to do some with that sharp tongue. You're going to have to do some with that spirit of holding the grudge for 17 years. You're going to have to do some with it. Because when that power come, God says, I'm about to I'm about to make you a power player. Oh man, man. It sounds like somebody playing a lotto. Yeah, you, you, and you don't even see it coming. And you can't even tell right now. You think I'm talking about everybody else except for you. God says, you don't have to be powerful for me to make you powerful. It, it, it's not in you right now because I'm still putting the ingredients in the bread so that when I put the heat on it, it'll rise. Somebody shout four months. Sounds like he's making bread. I got bread. <laughs> What in the sourdough is going on? You know, I'm just reminded of his message versus the Apostle Paul. You want to talk about Apostle Paul, right? Shipwreck. Apostle Paul's common message was he was not sufficient for these things. You know, but but uh, Keon Henderson talking about the power we have. Yeah, God's going to make us powerful. And then he's going to put that, he's going to make the ingredients and all this nonsense. It's just complete absurdities. I'm telling you what the Lord told me. I sent this to one of my friends today. I told him, I said, God told me to tell you something around the number four. He screenshot and sent me that he had saw 444 on the phone at the time that I sent it to him. Now, if you guys have been watching this channel for the last week or two, you know what that number means or, or it's around. It's around pretty much what he's been asking that the giving he's going to get is going to be over four million dollars. So. He loves the number four because it's a confirmation bias of the four million he's saying that he's going to receive from from you guys. That's going to give. Right. I've been seeing it on the clock because I'm telling you right now, I know what the Lord told me four months. I want you to pay attention to the number four in your life. It means something to somebody in this room today. And by faith, I want you to understand that by the time we get to November, everything that you have been through will begin to make sense. You may have to cry. You may have to wonder. You may have to be in the wilderness. But in four months, God is going to show himself. I don't, I don't know why this is taking four months when he said 21 days. I mean, you give 21 days. When, didn't he say that? 2100. And th they were going to give the, uh, you know, the f over four million was going to be receiving that. Right. He ended up apologizing and was like, well, if you can't give 21, you just <laughs> if you can't give 21, just give 21 over over three weeks. Right. Or something like that. But I believe this clip actually gets to his motive. Maybe a fro Freudian slip that comes out. Let's check this cl clip. God already told him. He had already told him. God predained Paul's path long before Paul knew what God was doing. Listen to me. Listen to me. What Festus, the governor, didn't know is that God was about to use his money to pay for Paul's trip. <laughs> See, what you got to understand is that God plans it and makes them pay for it. 
So is this about to happen? He's making the plans. He's actually telling you guys what's the what's the code? What's his motive? He's making the plan, but y'all are gonna pay for it. They they don't catch on. Watch well, he's gonna elaborate a little more too, watch. Listen, I'm trying to say what I'm saying oh, we hear without you. saying what I'm saying. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> God'll send the storm and make somebody else. He'll he'll give you the vision six months ahead of time. And you won't even know how it's going to happen. And then God will send a storm. He'll plan it and make them pay for it. What are you going to do when God starts to use every enemy in your life to finance every vision you have in your future? Can I tell you something? Your money is in the storm. Your deliverance is in the storm. Your way out is in. Yeah, again, this is just nonsense rhetoric. Nonsense rhetoric. Because even when Paul is speaking to uh, Festus, he's not in a storm. Again, conflating all sorts of, of stories together into one to prove he's going to get the money. This is, That's what all that was for. He's going to get the money he's been asking for, or really at this point, demanding. Uh, a couple more clips. Let's check this one out. God told me to add 500 seats to the sanctuary. He told me to just renovate it and see how many more seats we can get in the current building we had. God said. So he, he's talking about the plans he had prior to the storm happening. And so let's listen to this. That is not what I said. I told you to open the building big enough. So that anybody who whosoever will let them come. So God told me to tell you. So John three sixteen now is is referring to his church. You, you see, you see all the problems he's making. I mean, that takes about salvation. How Jesus saves uh, all his people. I mean, they they come to Christ. I mean, now this is a John three sixteen. Whosoever will, you know that we all know that passage, right? Is about his him opening his church so everybody can come to his church. You see, he doesn't, he doesn't mind you using any passage to refer to himself. But let's hear what else allegedly God told him, sir. Why are you always lying? If you play it safe, he's going to take away your safety. <laughs> Pastor, I can't swim. I don't know if Peter could either. But I know when you can't swim, you can walk on water. Touch somebody and say, I'm a water walker. I can't swim, but I'm going out to the deep. I don't have a life vest, but I'm going out to the deep. I don't have a business degree, but I'm sure going to start the company. I don't have nothing, but I'm about to start it. Do I have any deep water walkers in the room? He's going to have all these people drowning. No, 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 no. What, what, you know, starting this business, they have no acumen, no kind of business intelligibility to start a business they're going to just start a business these people are going to be way worse off you think you in debt now you're going to be way more in debt but keon said you're going to start the business my goodness one more clip let's uh in here it was a heck of a ride son i love you So he's uh, let me let me tell you what he's talking. He's talking about Abraham, right? Going up to, uh, you know, up to the mountain to slay his son. Right. But then why well, we all know the story. So that's that's what he's talking about. Abraham. Don't go any further. Now that I see that your hope and faith wasn't in him. Now that I know that you never cared about the building like that. And it wasn't about LED screens and pews and offices, but it was about the glory. Notice he's even reading himself into the story of Abraham. <laughs> there is no story that uh, Keon Hendren is, is not the center of the story. But he's trying to say, well, God, the way God tested Abraham, he's testing Keon. So God found out. He didn't care for his only begotten son, <laughs> right? 
And so because even though he talked about him, he was always talking about that church, how God was blessing it. And uh, God actually told him to grow the church and we're going to add more stuff to it. So, I mean, I don't see the parallel to the story of Abraham. But anyways, because Keon didn't care for it, God provide. Let's let's hear the rest. I've got a ram. He was born to die. A ram truck. And now I'm about to give you your son back and give you a substitutionary lamb. Oh, and by the way, I am showing you gratis what I'm about to do on Calvary in a few centuries. Behold, the lamb of God comes to take away the sins of the world now great parallel but that's not the that's not the main point of what he's about to say because that is a you know this story is a great type of the one who is to come amen hallelujah he mentions it but notice what he gets back to you always have to give him something to get something God, I speak on behalf of every member, every online member, every visitor. The building is yours. Do with it what you please. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the moment you get detached from your stuff, the more God can give you. What I find interesting besides gaslight, I'm thinking that's some type of arsonist. Besides the gaslighting is, you know, he's, he's talking about, hey, you, you guys need to be detached like I am. I, the, 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 the church is yours. I, I, do what, what you will. But me and my family, we want to serve the Lord. But he keeps talking about the church every week. Every interview I've heard of him since it happened, he's always talking about the church. <laughs> so he's making it seem like he don't care. No, this is what you call manipulation. It's the it's kind of like the reverse psychology. Well, I don't really care what you do with the car. And then the person actually takes care of the car. You're like, okay, yeah, you did good. Now, now you take the car, right? They hook it up, do it all well. Now you're like, yeah, I always cared about that. Right? This is that kind of uh, jargon. Who cares about your shoe collection? Who cares about your purses? Who cares about your belts? Who cares about your rims? Who cares about your car? The moth will eat it up. The rust will take it away. It was going to fall down eventually anyway. One day this building will not be here because the good Lord gives and he takes it away. Yeah. That is that is accurate, which is why you not should not put your trust in chariots and, you know, uh, being rich as he promised them that, you know, in four months they're going to be all rich. Again, he's a, he's a walking contradiction. Again, Keon makes it very clear of his chief concern is building his what I'm calling his brand, his his church, his facility bigger and better so he can have more money, more members as we as we have talked about. Again, he breeds as a man who's a he, who's a classic narcissist. He's narcissistic that the show is all about him. Again, this is why at every sermon I've heard of him, he is the main message and he'll use the Bible to point to himself. Again, please avoid Keon Henderson till the next time. Grace and peace. Oh, grace and peace. Thank you for watching another episode of All Things Theology. If you enjoyed what you heard today, go on and give me a like. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly lives, videos, interactions, exposing false teachers, sharing with you, the viewer, my theological beliefs, things about the culture and the Bible. So if you're here for that, come on and join us. Also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Links are in the description below. You can see content before it drops. You can also have Q&A sessions with also other Patreon members, YouTube members as well. So if you like that, 
hit the description link in below.